While looking back at old school photographs of the man that grew up to become Richard Huckle, it can be kind of hard to imagine this pleasant looking young boy turning out to be one of the UK's very worst criminals. A man who would seriously harm up to 200 children before he was eventually arrested and sentenced to carry out the rest of his days in a jail cell where he would brutally lose his life in October of 2019. Last year, the man responsible for Huckle's passing, fellow inmate Paul Fitzgerald, was found guilty and handed a life sentence for the crime. So how exactly did we get to the point where one crazed maniacal criminal is neutralizing another in cold blood and calling it poetic justice? The answer to that question is shocking, disturbing, and absolutely horrific, so let's get into it. Richard William Huckle was born on May 16, 1986 to a middle class family in the town of Ashford, which is located in the county of Kent in the UK. Most individuals who grow up to perpetrate the type of crimes that Richard would eventually be found guilty of, well, they tend to usually come from difficult upbringings to say the least. Whether it be a broken home, simple neglect, outright abandonment, or experiencing a themselves, there's almost always a history of mistreatment that plays a part in triggering this behavior. The crazy thing is that in Richard's case, there was nothing of the sort. If anything, he described his childhood as outright ordinary. I mean, his parents were loving people who treated him well and even took him to church every Sunday. Not sure if we should be glossing over that church part, but I mean, who knows at this point. Students who recall attending Folkestone Primary School with Richard remember him as a quiet but popular kid who was among the few pupils in his grade to get accepted into a selective all-boys secondary school called Harvey Grammar School. It was soon after he began his education here that Richard began drifting away from his friends and getting himself wrapped up in some less than legal activities. For instance, he began selling counterfeit Pokemon cards to his fellow students, which got him into some trouble with the school administration. After that, Richard began getting bullied and picked on, often being called rat-like because of his appearance as a teenager. I mean, I truly do wish that fake Pokemon cards were the worst thing that this man has done, but we're about to get into it. Richard Huckle officially became a monster at the age of 19. That's how old he was when he decided to take a gap year from the South Kent College to take on a teaching placement in the country of Malaysia. Most kids like to spend their gap years enjoying fruity drinks with umbrellas on sandy beaches, but Richard was of a very different kind. Under the cover of assisting with charity work, Richard would enact a campaign of pure evil. Huckle had used his religion and a fast-track teaching qualification to dupe his way into a poor community. Over the course of eight years, he took advantage of scores of Malaysian children while posing as a well-educated English teacher, a photographer, and a dedicated Christian. Yeah, talk about evil. During his time in Malaysia, he shared a tiny apartment with a woman named Sammy G, who recalls that Richard would spend most of his time alone. In hindsight, she also thinks that he acted strangely around children. Although not necessarily in the way you might think, Sammy told the Guardian he was nervous. He wouldn't talk to anyone or interact with kids. While some people found Richard's behavior to be a bit odd, they nonetheless put up with him out of the respect for the charity work that he claimed to be doing. But in reality, while he was posing as a missionary by day, at night he would sneak off to target Malaysian youngsters with frightening ease. In posts that would later be uncovered by the police on the dark web, Richard would reveal some truly disgusting thoughts. Here, he celebrates his crimes. I'd hit the jackpot, a three-year-old girl as loyal to me as a dog, and no one seemed to care. And also get this, he created a 60-page how-to guide informing others how to get away with some of the very worst crimes you could possibly imagine. He also kept a scorecard for himself, tallying the number of children that he had harmed by giving himself points while also sharing pictures and videos perpetuating the crimes as well. Now, it was this compulsion to publicize his crimes that eventually brought about his downfall. And the crazy thing about Richard's story is that it wasn't what he photographed that brought him down, but what he photographed with. Upon discovering this about Richard's camera, authorities swept photography sites like Flickr and Trek Earth for photos taken in Southeast Asia using this exact same make and model. And before long, they uncovered some perfectly legal photos that Richard had taken in Cambodia as well as Vietnam. From there, they traced the photos to Richard's email address, which in turn tied Richard to many other illicit websites, some of which were under electronic surveillance by the police for their illegal material. Material. At that point, the cops realized they had found their man. In December of 2014, Richard was arrested by the National Crime Agency at Gatwick Airport trying to fly back to the UK to be home for Christmas. By this point, he had amassed over 20,000 images documenting his crimes. He was released on bail and allowed to stay at his parents' home while the police analyzed the evidence against him. He said you're not really a pro at anything except being a What do you mean by that? He said, by no means am I claiming to be a king or a top dog but the experiences I've had and the regularity of them put me way up in what people aspire to be. Did you write that? And while he initially denied his atrocious crimes, he would later confess to his grief-stricken parents at home, 
who, sickened by what their son had done, kicked them out and begged the police to return him to custody. During the course of Richard's trial, his parents gave witness testament in favor of the prosecution, and shortly afterwards, Richard was handed 22 life sentences after admitting to 71 counts of seriously harming children, even though the judge made a point to note that the actual number was probably a lot higher than that. This is for Richard. Um, just to let you know, I'm still remanded in prison, but I've been transferred to HMP Belmarsh now. Um, my prison number is... Uh, just to wish you Merry Christmas, and uh, if you still want to keep in touch, then just send me a letter sometime. Richard was ordered to serve 25 years at the very least, which means he could have been released around 2041. But long before that ever became a possibility, Richard would pass away behind bars. After meeting in the Delta Wing of HMP Full Sutton, Richard Huckle and Paul Fitzgerald's lives would intersect, resulting in Huckle losing his life at Fitzgerald's hands. Now, as much as we really would like to provide the full context of how exactly Richard Huckle passed away at the hands of Paul Fitzgerald, due to the nature of it, it truly is too grisly for YouTube censorship guidelines. Much like a lot of the subject matter in this video, if you've made it this far, you know what I mean when I say seriously harm. If you do wish to know what happened with its full description, there is a detailed Sky News documentary about this. For some, the 78-minute attack was just an end for a vile predator with a disgusting track record of crime, but that didn't stop Fitzgerald from being prosecuted to the full extent of the law. It took jurors around an hour to reach a verdict, and when they did, they found Fitzgerald guilty of murder and sentenced him to 34 years in prison. That is, of course, on top of his laundry list of other charges that he had already been serving time for, including, but not limited to, the serious harm of children in his own past. But with Richard now dead, some people are furious that he's been spared the decades that would have otherwise otherwise been spent behind bars while his victims are forced to carry on with a life sentence dealing with the after effects of the crimes committed. Others, on the other hand, are simply happy to know that no matter what, he'll never be able to hurt another child again. It's a complicated story, and one where there's no real right or wrong answer. Regardless, I don't think anybody out there is going to miss Richard Huckle, and while I generally like to tease the possibility of someone's narrative not yet being finished, I'm more than happy to bring a close, once and for all, the life story of Richard Huckle. Rest in piss. That guy.